Hello there, here with me again, Cheryl Shamina, for your English news at five. Let's get to the headlines. Now, the budget 2021 is very important to determining the resurgence of people's lives and the nation's economy. The budget is extremely concerned with the sufferings of the people and the country in facing these challenging times. He said that for the sake of survival, those affected, especially those who have lost their jobs, were extremely hopeful of withdrawing a certain amount of their contributions in the Employees' Provident Fund, EPF, as contained under Budget 2021. Meanwhile, National Film Development Corporation Malaysia FINAS Chairman Zakaria Abdul Hamid said that Budget 2021 is critical in the recovery of the economy. Thereby, it is extremely important Budget 2021 is approved so that programs that had been planned could be implemented without any hindrances, thus providing job and income opportunities to every layer of the country's creative industry players. As for National Fishermen's Association, Nekmat Chairman Abdul Hamid Bahari said all the initiatives announced by the government through Budget 2021, which he described as expansionary, was in line with the current situation, especially since the effects of the pandemic would continue to be felt next year. Association of Registered Child Care Providers Malaysia PPBM President Anissa Ahmad said it was necessary and important to approve anything that could help improve the quality of early childhood education. Right. Now, the free business registration scheme will be expanded to the youth and single mother entrepreneurs in the B40 group. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Datuk Sri Alexander Nantalingi said the effort would spark business interest and encourage more participation from the groups due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. He added the Companies Commission of Malaysia, SSM, will formulate a suitable method to enable youth and single mother entrepreneurs in the B40 group to benefit from the free business registration scheme. Usaha SSM memperluaskan inisiatif pendaftaran peniagaan percuma kepada golongan belia dan ibu tunggal B40 ini bakal menjetus minat berniaga dan menggalakkan lebih ramai penyertaan golongan ini untuk menceburi bidang perniagaan. Menjana peluk pulangan pendapatan tambahan yang dapat menampung kehidupan seharian mereka seterusnya merancakkan lagi pertumbuhan sektor perniagaan uh, di negara ini he said this during the minister's question time on tuesday now the mandatory covid-19 quarantine period has been reduced from 14 days to 10 starting yesterday december 14 however based on scientific data the ministry of health has made a decision that the risk of covid-19 infection has no significant difference even if the quarantine period is shortened to seven days health director general tan sri dr noor hisham abdullah said that the shorter quarantine period was in line with the latest clinical reports from around the world. Kementerian Kesihatan telah pun berbincang dan kita berguna pakai data-data saintifik untuk menyokong kuarantin untuk tempoh 10 hari. Yang ini akan kita laksanakan pada hari ini dan mereka yang sedang di kuarantin menjalani kuarantin akan juga dipertimbangkan untuk kita kuarantinkan untuk tempoh 10 hari. He said this at a press conference on COVID-19 developments yesterday. In addition, Dr. Noor Hisham said the health ministry will review any matters regarding logistics on individuals who have to undergo quarantine. COVID-19 tests will be conducted on individuals on the 8th or 9th day and will only be released if their test results show positive on the 10th day. Now, the Fitch ratings downgrade for Malaysia's credit rating for A negative to B positive will not stifle efforts towards economic recovery in 2021. Now, Finance Minister Tunku Dato Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz said Fitch itself has projected the local economy to grow 6.7% in line with Malaysia's own projection. Dunku Zafrol said this generally shows confidence in the capabilities of the Malaysian economy to bounce back. He said in response to a question by Gan MP Lim Guan Eng during the minister's question time at the Dewan Rakyat on Tuesday, 
who wanted to know what measures were taken by the government to address Fitch's downgrade. Dalam hal ini, FBM, KLCI dan mata wang ringgit kekal stabil dan kita merekodkan permintaan yang tinggi iaitu 2.6 kali melebihi nilai tawaran untuk bond kerajaan MGII 10 tahun yang diterbitkan minggu lalu. Dalam kata mudahnya, keyakinan pelabur terhadap pasaran modal negara jangka panjang masih kukuh. On good governance practices, Tengku Zafrul said any appointment of members of the board, including politicians, is made on the basis of suitability in terms of qualifications, experience and expertise. It also takes into account the policy of inclusion and diversity under the Malaysian Code or Corporate Government 2017. Selain itu, berdasarkan serta syarikat, lantikan politik perlu melalui pelbagai saringan seperti oleh Bursa Malaysia, Suruhanjaya Security, Bank Negara Malaysia, Suruhanjaya Pencegah Rasuah Malaysia, Polis Diraja Malaysia dan lain-lain. Saya ingin menegaskan bahawa kerajaan komited memastikan amalan governance terbaik sentiasa dipegang. Kerajaan komited untuk melaksanakan langkah konsolidasi dan kemampanan fiskal berpandukan kepada rangka, rangka kerja fiskal jangka sederhana MTFF serta penggumbalan satu akta tanggungjawab fiskal FRA yang bertujuan untuk menambah baik pengurusan dan pelaporan fiskal. Seterusnya menambah baik aspek transparansi dan good governance. Ini termasuk menurunkan tahap keberhutangan negara atau defisit fiskal yang tanggung dan diwarisi oleh kerajaan sekarang. 25 individuals whose houses in Long Lama were destroyed by fire on Monday will receive assistance from the Divisional Disaster Committee. Of Welfare Community Wellbeing Women, Family and Childhood Development, Datuk Sri Fatima Abdullah said immediate relief assistance would be in the form of food to alleviate the hardship of the fire victims which completely raised two double-storey houses on Monday. She added that the victims will be placed at temporary centre decided by the committee after engaging with the victims, while other assistance will be channelled at a later stage. Fatima pointed out that the victims are entitled to receive aids worth up to 1,450 ringgit, followed by assistance worth 5,000 ringgit max for building materials or rental. The fire erupted at 5.35 p.m. Firefighters from Lopeng Fire Station took two hours, 15 minutes to arrive at the scene. Eight and 17 people from the fire and second house, respectively, were left with nothing but their cloth on their back. No injuries or casualties were reported. All single-hull tanker ships will be allowed to continue operating to supply essential items such as diesel without restrictions in the waters of Sarawak. This was following the amendment of a Malaysian shipping notice by the Marine, Marine Department on December 7, which detailed the exemption for oil tankers to comply with the double-hull double-bottom requirement. Transport Minister Dato Lee Kim Shin said the tanker ships are deployed for transporting diesel fuel from adjacent towns, supplying them to the upper river communities, which use diesel for power generators in the longhouses, clinics, government stations or offices, schools and workers' camps. Originally, the MSN 16-2020 is a notice issued by the Marine Department on August 5 to clarify to the shipping community the registration of oil tankers under the Malaysian flag, general categories oil tankers and the restrictions on the type of oil permitted to be carried as cargo. After receiving complaints from the shipping community that had faced difficulties to comply with the notice, his ministry wrote an appeal to seek exemption from the Federal Ministry of Transport, which resulted in the publication of MSN 22-2020. However, he clarified that this notice still applies to oil tankers in Bintulu port. Meanwhile, he said the fact that the Marine Department was willing to amend the MSN 16-2020 and gave the exemption to the shipping community proved that the current federal government was willing to listen to the people's concerns. On to the next news, the curfew in the waters of seven districts in the Eastern Sabah Security Zone or S Zone scheduled to end tomorrow has been extended to December 31. Now the curfew covers the waters of Dawau, Sampuna, Kuna, Lahadatu, Kinabatangan, Sandakan and Peluran. Sabah Police Commissioner Dato Hazani Ghazali said those living in the area are prohibited from approaching or being in the waters of the seven districts between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. The curfew also serves to protect the safety and well-being of Sabahans in the ESS zone. 
He further added, information gathered has revealed that militant groups involved in kidnapping for ransom and the Abu Sayyaf group are still attempting to infiltrate these waters to carry out kidnapping and cross-border crimes. And with that concludes the news at 5. Here with me, Cheryl Shamina. Stay tuned for the 11.30 Nightline with Razi Ahmad. I'll see you next time. Have a good night.